What's up, everybody? Hey, so Texan Connection number two coming up right now. In this episode, me and Matt talked about male relationships, uh, having meaningful relationships with uh, your friends and, and making friends. Uh, we talked about the conditioning that we have as we grow up, uh, you know, possibly as introverts like like he and myself both are, right? Um, we talk about some, some daddy issues, because guess what? Men have daddy issues too, right? And sometimes they uh, impact our ability to have meaningful relationships with other men and uh believe it or not we had an earthquake right in the middle of the damn podcast so uh texas connection number two coming up stay tuned the opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the speakers and not of dod or any of its components take me to the countryside going on matt the day in paradise bro dude i like your hat man yeah I like yours yeah you know, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know millie millie gave me shit about it she was like uh she's like uh texan connection that's kind of cheesy yeah right I right uh, uh, i was like whatever dude okay <laughs> i was like that shit is clever as fuck okay anyways um so hey man um you know uh i'm pretty excited to talk about what we're gonna talk about tonight yeah yeah we've been uh kind of noodling on it uh for the last few days um yeah i mean male relationships right Mm. why are they so hard why is it so hard to make friends? Why don't I have any friends? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no friends. I ain't got no friends, man. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I got to credit my wife for prompting this conversation because we, yeah. were, we were actually having a discussion last week. Uh, we went out for my birthday and, um, you know, we were just, we were just, I don't even remember how it came up, but we were just both kind of in a place where we were like, why don't we have any friends? You know, because we're not from, we, we live yeah. in Fort Worth. Neither yeah. of us are from Fort Worth, right? So our close knit familial friends are not here, right? She's from back in LA. I'm from down around Houston, you know. And yeah, it's you know I'm I'm 41 now. Yeah, it's hard to make friends, man. And like, I mean, uh, both of you guys are transplants to Texas, right? Yeah. You know? Well, and, uh, I mean, I'm Texas. I, I'm born and raised in Texas. Texas, but I mean, when you're six hours away from your home, you're basically in another, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, so transplants to where you're at now. Right. And, um, I mean, that's hard, right? So, uh, it, it, we're going to get into the meat of it, but you know, um, I have experience with this, you know, you know, in the Navy, you, you transfer, between duty station and duty station and duty station, right? And so every time you're, 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 you know, you get there, and you may or may not know somebody that that you knew from like a previous duty station, um, but more often than not, you don't really know anybody, right? And so it's like, oh, hey, like, hey guys, um, I'm Dean. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice to meet you and now let's get to know each other and uh but you, you do it over and over and um but you know in 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 your in your case like you transplant to a place and it's like you know i've got i've got the people that i work with i got my family that like, like my immediate family but i don't have like the extended family i don't have you know, a lot of like uh, connection points kind of thing. Right. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's network effect, right? You don't have many nodes in your network. Right. Right. right, right, right. And, um, you know, we're both self-employed, right. And yeah. not to make this about us, but this is just our experience, right. We're both self-employed and, you know, um, she actually makes friends with clients sometimes, right. She, she right. becomes friends with clients because she, you know, something happens when you go into a salon, it's like you're in a, a therapy session, right? So 
they get into it, right? Me and my customers, we never see each other again, right? And yeah. like, so, um, so I don't, you know, the people that I'm interacting with that are new people coming into my world, you know, it's very transactional, right? I mean, we're there to service them and, and take care of them, but it's, it's like, okay, we fixed your house. We're going on down the road, right? Yeah. Um, and as far as my employees, right? Like you, you have to draw a line on personal and business relationships, right? Because yeah. uh, blurring that line can can just put you in uncomfortable situations down the line. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, like I said, we were talking about it and I really started uh, thinking about what it was, like, why are you and I friends, right? And yeah. my buddy Adrian, why are we friends, right? And I think it's funny that, um, you know, both of or not both, but two of my closest friends, I started out not particularly liking them, right? <laughs> like, like we talked about this, right? Oh, no. you, started yeah. working at, you started working at Papado's. You were like this new cocky dude that like became manager. And I was, yeah. what is this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and, um, I, know, I know you got a lot of thought, right? But I'll, I'll, I'm going to interrupt it. And um, I'm going to let because- you finish. <laughs> You can finish when I'm done, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like real talk. Uh, so just kind of backtracking. So the kind of the theme of this podcast is, um, and you, you might have said it before, but just to reemphasize is um, meaningful and healthy uh, relationships between men, right? And Um, so what you just said, you know, uh, not to psychoanalyze you or anything like that, but, um, you know, like, you know, your two best friends, you were in some respect kind of like in competition with them, like off the bat. And then, and then you grew to, to enjoy their company and like respect them. right? Right. And, uh, and, um, you know, we're going to get into the fact that we, you know, we talked to, we talked to a therapist before we actually did this podcast, yeah. right? like, you know, and, uh, and one of the things that she talked about was like, how are you conditioned as men? And, and, uh, and one of the ways you're conditioned as men is that you're in constant competition with other, other men. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The competitive nature of men is a real thing. Right. Yeah. And it's in, it's ingrained in us. And, you know, that's an internal struggle. I think when you, when you meet a new dude, right. Whether it's your wife's friend's husband, or, you know, you meet some dude at the gym or whatever, like you're automatically sizing each other up without even realizing, right. Just the, Mm -hmm. the niceties of conversation, right. What do you do for a living? Oh, I do such and such. Oh, cool. I already don't make shit. Right. Like that's, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. those, those are the, those are like the mm-hmm. types of just like natural internal conversations that get had. Right. And so it's hard, I think for men to, um, to overcome that. Right. And Amanda, the therapist we talked to, uh, you know, she mentioned that, you know, the energy between um, masculine and feminine uh, energies is different. Right masculine yeah. energy is brute force right we want to we want to win we want to overpower we want to provide we want to like argh, conquer right yeah women is more it, it the feminine energy is more introspective and more flow and connection and yeah. observing and listening yeah. right that's why you know men never listen to their you know and it's it's a, it's a constant struggle because it's it's not in our nature right and so yeah when you when you take that out of like your your marital relationship. Right. And you put it in like, okay, how do I, how do I bring these types of, you know, introspection and and understanding Mm. into my relationships when I meet men, right. It becomes this whole like uncomfortable thing. Right. (laughs) It's like, man. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, like, um, we don't want to appear weak. Right. right. Like that's, that's kind of the, the, the male perspective is like, I'm not going to show this guy, the, you know, that, that I'm going to open up. Right. That's it. Right. Like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to show this guy my hand. Right. Cause he, he, I don't know, man, maybe it goes back to some prehistoric thing. Like 
this dude trying to take my uh yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like yeah you trying to move in on me you know yeah, exactly it's you just know? this it's an ingrained like i mean it's a survival mechanism from right. way back way back you know like, right, 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 right. And it's, yeah it's yeah it's a survival mechanism it's a defense mechanism right it's why people are tribal it's why people are all i mean people you should be suspicious right you yeah. know you should have boundaries but you should have boundaries without shutting out opportunities right yeah and yeah so yeah yeah so um there's the preface for kind of what we're going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, on this episode. Um, so uh, talking to the audience right now. So Matt is much more organized than me. And so like when we were talking to Manda, um, he took notes and and I was just like, hey, Manda, <laughs> let's do uh, this. Is so nice to talk to you kind of thing. And uh, Matt was like, yeah, I got some notes. Right. And um, and so I, I think that like we'd like to structure this this podcast to say, hey, here's some things that, um, you know, that that we recognize as um, issues that prevent us from having meaningful and uh, like healthy and productive productive is probably the wrong. See, I, I, you went down, I like it went down that road, right? Like not productive, like, you know, healthy relationships with our, our like our fellow men type thing. And um, uh, like you kind of like took some notes and, and so I'm gonna let you kind of lead the, lead the conversation here, Matt. Yeah. I mean, I think it kind of comes down to things we've already touched on, right? Like identifying some problem areas, some, some things that men just do by default. Right. And one of those is is guarding that energy, right. Guarding that, that forceful, like, like you said, you don't want to show your hand, right. You don't want to open up because, you know, it can open you up to being vulnerable. Right. And, and what does that mean in today's modern world that, well, that doesn't mean that some dude's moving in to steal your stash of food that you got hidden in your right. cave. Right. Mm-hmm. But it means that it may not result in a favorable outcome, right? You may put yourself out there and this guy's just looking at you like fucking weirdo. Like, what are you talking about? You know, like those are the fears that men have, right? It's not, it's not about like anything bad is going to happen. Like I beat this dude at a, at a, you know, Halloween party or whatever, we're all just kind of mingling or whatever. Right. Like, I'm not worried about that, but I'm like in the back of my head, like I'm sizing this dude up. Right. Like I'm, I'm deciding, like, is this, is this someone that like, I, a, do I like them? Am I responding to their energy? Right. And that, that got brought up the other day too. And it's kind of the other thing is, is energy, right? Like there's, there's a certain like vibration that people put off. There's a certain Mm. like, and it's not about being like amped up, or like super mellow, like I'm friends with people that are super mellow, but they have a uh, internal, like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but like they, they put off an energy. It's like, okay, this dude is ambitious, right? Like he, like, like, you know, yeah. you talk to some dudes and they're just like bumps on a log, right? They're just like trying to talk to them. They're just like, <laughs> it's like, I can't, I can't operate like that. Right. Like if I'm going to, yeah. if I'm going to take time away from my family and my businesses yeah. to spend time with another person, I don't need to be getting anything out of it. Right. I don't need to be like gaining or anything like that, but like, I want to make sure we're on the same like wavelength. Right. Yeah. yeah. I want to associate with people that have that fire inside or have, you know, something that they're working on or, or whatever the case may be, because that's where I think that's where like, the true connections come right yeah um and it it just goes on another point that i i, I saw another uh, person make the other day they were they were on their podcast um and it was like you know do you have friends or do you have business associates as an adult mm. in the business world right right because if if you are working on something you're working on a pro- like take your podcast for instance right yeah. like if someone's not actively helping you right like reaching right. out providing content to you connecting you with people that they think may be interesting to your right. show or giving you tips on production or whatever the case may be right if they're not actively involved they're not really like your friend right because like <laughs> this yeah. is your passion right this is yeah. just something you're, you're just doing. you're not making money from this you're not 
doing this to replace your career. Right. But like, right. it's something that's important to you. Right. Right. With me, it's, it's my businesses. Right. If, if, if I meet someone and I tell them about what's going on and they're like, Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. That's awesome. And then I never hear from them again. Like, obviously like there's no connection there. Right. But like yeah. if I meet someone and they reach out to me and they're like, Hey, I really enjoyed our conversation the other night. Yeah. And I thought of someone that could be a benefit to you. I just want to make an introduction. Like to yeah. me, that's like a check mark. Like I'm going to, I'm going to return the favor for that dude. And like, the, that's where like meaningful connections happen is around whatever energy is spinning in your, your yeah. individual world. Like how can they come together? So I think yeah, that's man. hard to encapsulate and it's hard to like target and like go after. But I think it's something that like, um, we subconsciously recognize in other people. And if we subconsciously recognize something, that means we can consciously also train ourselves to be aware of that and let it be a trigger. Like when you meet someone be like, Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have that beer with that guy. Right. Like maybe I should, whatever, join their game. Yeah. hundred percent, man. Right. So I, like, I, I hear everything you're saying. It, 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 like, actually it's like, it's getting me fucking fired up, bro. It's fucking making me like, right? So, but I'll try to temper my excitement. And what, like, so I'm hearing everything you're saying, and it's kind of this thing where you, um, you know, you, you you meet somebody, and it's like, you know, like we're on the same page, in that, you know. It might be business or it might be like, Hey man, let's, let's like do this thing. Um, you know, um, and like, I don't know, man, sometimes you just, you just meet dudes. Right. And there's no, there's no fear of like, Oh, this dude's trying to get at me or whatever. And it's just like, let's, let's, let's get it right. Let's, let's go after it. Let's do this. Right. And, um, and I think that that's, um, you know, that that's probably like kind of like we were talking about. It's kind of like a primal kind of urge, right? Like, hey man, oh, like, oh, you like, you like, <laughs> you like what I like? Yeah. Fucking let, let's ride, man. You know? And yeah. uh um yeah, sometimes it I think sometimes it comes down to those initial like just gut feelings, right? Like it, yeah, like gut feelings. But I think it also um comes down to kind of another bullet point on the list is like, what are your values, right? Like yeah. who are you as a person? Right. And yeah. meeting, meeting people that align with those values can be difficult. So I got baptized last year. Right. And mm. faith has become a bigger part of my life than it ever has before. Right. Yeah. And that kind of clashes with some of the knucklehead things I used to do back in the day. Yeah. Right. And, but those knucklehead things that I used to do back in the day are still like, part of me right like there's still like those energies kind of like swarm around inside of me so sometimes it's hard to like i cuss a lot right i love jesus but i cuss a lot yeah and so yeah. like it, it can be hard to reconcile reconcile the differences you may have in values or criteria for your relationships or things yeah. that you're specifically looking for in people yeah. and then people you meet that you just have that gut gut check reaction to you're like dude i could totally hang out with this dude like for me yeah. some of those gut check those gut reactions are not great like i've met people that like immediately i connect with because they they resonate with something mm. something right that's not necessarily a healthy part of my psyche right? right it's not really a healthy part of my life and i immediately like gravitate towards them and i have to like check myself and be like you know what dude like yeah. i cannot hang out with this dude it like, might I tap in <laughs> it might tap into some of those like younger um not so healthy yeah ur just things urges things that, that you, you had yeah well not necessarily urges it's just like things that resonate with you right like yeah like you know when i used to go out a lot right when i was single and young you know i used to go to the bar and hang yeah. out and just be yeah. like super free spirit and all that stuff like meeting someone that's still in that world right now i might be like i might gravitate towards that right but like yeah. I also have to check that with my current criteria for like right. relationships and right. like, how is this going to fit into like my actual life? Right. Yeah. I can't hang out with you, bro. Like I'm not going to be at the bar every night. Yeah. Right? Like, 100 percent. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, um, we talked to Amanda and, and, and so like, 
you know, one thing she talked about, which it was great to talk to her, um, because you and I can sit here and talk about these things and kind of like, you know, pontificate all night, right? <laughs> you know, that word but, there. <laughs> it's gonna be in every episode, pretty much, right? <laughs> um, but one of the one of the things that she talked about was that. You know, she she talked about what do you value and like uh, what is your conditioning, which really resonated with me, um, you know. And, and so like um, she she kind of talked about um, it, it's hard to make friends as a man. If if you're just trying to make friends or, or, or you know, establish meaningful relationships in your workplace. Right. Like that, that's not enough. Right. Like your, your workplace is your workplace. And, and so then, you know, she kind of talked about like hobbies and like, um, you know, the things that you do outside of work, which is going to get into something that we're going to talk about probably, you know, on the next time when she's going to be, um, um, you know, a, a guest on our podcast, um, spoiler alert, we're going to have a therapist on our podcast. Um, but it's getting real, homie. It's getting real. Earthquake. 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 Oh, Earthquake. I haven't felt it yet. But I'm going to keep this rolling, homie. Hey, we yeah. talk about two nights ago. We had a, a almost an eight. I that. Right? Yeah. I was laying in bed. <laughs> and I, it was, Started hitting, and I was like, "Oh, shit. there it goes." Oh, shit. Yeah, I see your bookcase behind you. Yeah. I was going. I was going pretty good. That's so wild, man. I don't like this, man. <laughs> so hey, we're gonna keep it rolling, though, man. Yeah, I mean, there's something real eerie about the earth moving underneath you, <laughs> like. Yeah, you can talk about meaningful male relationships all you want until <laughs> until your your fucking house starts moving. Yeah. All right. Wow. Um, I think we're done. Okay. Anyways, so Amanda was like, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it's about your conditioning, and then it, it, you kind of talked about it like men are force and women are flow, right? And, uh, um, you know, like, uh, I, I, I don't know, man, it's, 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 it's hard for us to find that connection. Right. Like, right. uh, for me, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of easy okay. and I, I'll explain that later, but, um, I can only imagine for like, especially guys that, you know, that, that don't like stay where they're from like you. Right. Um, right. and, and uh, also like you've done it, you, you've you been dropped, you've got practice under your belt, right? Like you've right. been dropped into however many duty stations you're, you're at now, right? And you're you're very transient in your, your you know, relationships. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, you know, you've yeah. met a lot of people. Right. Um, I'm an only child, yeah. self-employed, father of three, husband, you know, like, yeah, I don't get, I don't have time to do shit, right? And so, dude. Yeah, and, and I feel like a lot of men are in that position. You know, maybe not the exact same setup as me, but a lot of men they don't get practice meeting. You know, like literally being forced to meet new people. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to like change a job and like go start. It's yeah. another thing to like right. uproot your whole family, move to another part of the globe. Yeah. And like be immersed in a whole different like support system. Well, so not only do they not get the practice, but um, in society, there's not value on it, right? right. There's not there like like there there is a value on, you know, I'm not you know I'm not trying to like gender discriminate kind of thing, right? You know, but um, there's a value on like, you know, if a woman moves to a new place, like one of the main things that's super important to them is they need to make like friends that are in their social network because that is what kind of like makes them happy. Right. right. But if a man moves to a new place, it's like, you know, what's your job? 
How much money are you making? Do you have a house? Right. It's right. like it's it's this very practical kind of idea. It's not about like, do you, you know, do you even when I say it, it's like, do you feel comfortable? Do you have <laughs> friends? Right? right. You know, but like those things are so important, right? But yeah. we just don't value them as men, which is crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's part of the constructs of society, right? Like it's just yeah. it's just how things go, right? And like I don't want to get me started on the whole gender topic, but like men and women have different roles in the world. Sorry, they do. Yeah, of course right? they do. And of course there's exceptions to every rule, but like we are conditioned as men, women are conditioned as women. It's as right. simple as that, right? We don't yeah. need to blur it the line. But like men are raised to provide they're raised to be strong they're raised to walk it off they're raised to don't yeah. cry right? like be tough yeah. Yeah. right and that's yeah. fine those are tools that you need to like make it in the world right? right but there's a downside to that there's a there's a, a dark side of the moon to that and it's you know it doesn't really prepare you to um you know be an open spouse right or be like someone that talks about your feelings yeah right? prepare yeah you to be an open person to like make meaningful relationships with other people. Right. And um, some people that comes like super easy to them. Right. Like I know guys that like, they're just those forces of nature. They just walk in a room that can meet anybody and mm. talk to them, open up, remember their name three years from now when they see him again, you know, like, yeah, that's not the norm. Right. That's not, that's not average Joe. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to just go around in circles, but I think, you know, it's important to kind of like identify those so that you can be aware of them, right? And not just be mm-hmm. like, oh, whatever, I don't know why, I don't have a bunch of friends, whatever. But I think it's important to understand that like we have that competitive nature, we guard our energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we may even be like an introvert, right? Um, we have certain criteria for our relationships that we're seeking, right? And being aware of all that, if it's important to you, like can prepare you to, change some things and, and, you know, put yourself out there. So, um, so l- let me ask you this question, Matt. Um, you know, so uh, how much, how much do you think that our, our dad has to do with this? And, and I'll, and I'll, before, before we go into this, right. Let me talk to you about my dad. Right. So yeah. uh, my dad, I, I was the, the last kid of um, his second marriage. Right. So, I was number um, six, right? And, um, you know, he was 49 when I was conceived, right? And, um, and d- you know, we, we, we had, like, a mild relationship. I mean, I love him, right? He's dead right now, you know, whatever. But I, I fucking love that guy, right? And uh, he, he was a good dad in my mind, but... Um, you know, like, what did he teach me about being a man in a sense that like what we're talking about, which is like, how do you, how do you know, like I had almost no connection with him until yeah. the last 10 years of his life. And even then it was a, a you know, a timid relationship. Right. I mean, I, we never really like talked in like, right. you know, you, you, does that make sense? And so like, I think I'm that, I think that like, you know, I'm, I'm not a psychologist, man, but it, it kind of feels like, um, you know, we, we, we're, we're conditioned by our fathers kind of thing. Does that make sense? Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. It's got to come from somewhere, right? Like yeah. it's not, you know, it's not, it's not an accident. Right. And so, yeah. I mean, it may, it may be unintentional, but it's, it's where you get it from. Right. Yeah. And like my dad, you know, my parents got divorced when I was about four He lived in the same town, about 15 minutes outside of town. Um, And, you know, I saw him every other weekend and we had a great relationship growing up. Um, But it didn't really get deep and meaningful until I was in my mid 20s. Right. Right. Until after I got out of the Navy, I came home. Right. Like some real shit had happened to me. And and now he could now he felt like he could be valuable to me because I'm sure growing up he was like, I don't know, go pick up sticks and cut the grass. And <laughs> I got work to do, you know, like I get it. Yeah. But as far as like, you know, s- seeing his patterns of relationships with other people, like he had, 
he had close friends. Well, let me, let me put it this way. He had friends that were also business associates that he had done business dealings with and they became friends and yeah. they all hung out and whatnot. But like, I could tell they weren't like super deep yeah. friendships because of the way he would talk about them behind closed doors. Right. Mm. Like, like, yeah, we hang out, but eh, he's got a, he drinks yeah. a lot of yeah, yeah, we hang yeah. out, but he's a little crazy or what? You know what I mean? It wasn't ever right. like, oh, I love that dude, man. Like, like that dude. That's my, my dude. I love that yeah. dude. Kind it was never, it was never that. Right. And then like, as they got older, you know, they used to be, they used to go out. They used to, you know, go dancing on the weekends, him and my stepmom and uh, appeared to be social butterflies, right? Like they were just out there. Right. Right. But then later on in life, when they got a little older, the truth came out and my dad was basically a hermit. He was like, I don't give a damn about anything. People like what we see him, you know, you see him out on Friday night or whatever. Like we're not, you know, close, yeah. you know, because my stepmom would always give him shit. Why don't we ever go out anymore? Why don't we ever do anything? <laughs> yeah. What do we need to do? Right. So yeah. it, it just kind of set a pattern in me that like those things aren't important. Right. What's important is keeping your head down, providing right. for your family, right. Making sure your shit's <laughs> in order making yeah. sure you're not prioritizing the wrong things, right? Like that's where my head went and like it worked because that's where I am now, you know, right. like I literally like, I'm like laser guided yeah. um, and to my detriment sometimes, right? Like even with yeah. my, my wife, I got to like be intentional about like stopping work, right? And like turning it off and, and being present yeah. in my relationship, right? And um, yeah, yeah. It's, through, it's through those exercises that I've realized some things about myself, like, why I don't have any friends, right? And like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, old boy. Oh, hey, if nothing else comes out of this podcast, I fucking love you. You're my <laughs> fucking dude. Like, arms around you. No homo. <laughs> like, I love you, dude. You know that, right? I love you too, bro. And like, we have that. We have that relationship, right? Yeah. And yeah. and. And I want, I want to make this point too, right? The point yeah. of this podcast is not, this episode is not to be all kumbaya and like, nah. you need to go out there and fucking find your, your bro soulmate, right? Like that's, <laughs> that's not what this is yeah, about, right? right? Yeah. Because those relationships aren't meant to be plenty, right? Like you're not supposed to have like yeah. 20 best friends, right. right? Right. But there's some people out there that might not even have one, right? Or like, yeah. or, 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 you know, yeah. I have a couple, but like, it would be super awesome if I had one in the town I lived in, you know, you just gotta be open to it. You gotta be open to the possibility of it. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's, you know, this dude that you hang out with or whatever, but you know, for whatever reason, not for whatever reason, because of your conditioning, because of your experiences in life, because of, you know, these X, Y, Z reasons, um, you know, maybe you have put up a, a barrier to say like, Hey man, yeah, let's go have a beer. Um, you know, let's hang out, like let's talk, but let's not get too fucking deep. Right. Like, uh, you know, Hey, I'm gonna keep it really fucking real right now. Right. Like your dude, you know, somebody, somebody that like you're cool with push, puts their, puts their arm around you and like gives you, you know, one of these, right. It's like, Mm, I don't know you like that, homie, right? Whereas, <laughs> like, like if I, if I were to like pull you in, like if I see you, like I'm gonna see you this summer, right? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give you a big fucking hug, right? I'm gonna give you a big hug, like, yo, dude, I have, like, I missed you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I've known you for 20 years, right? But like, if 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 a you know if if a dude that like you're trying to build a, a, a you know a healthy like friendship like meaning yeah there's a boundary there <laughs> right but yeah. but like why like what you know it, it, you know if homeboy puts his arm around you like dude i fucking love you kind of thing right and you're like if, you know if, if you kind of shy away from i don't know man like i don't know you like that like i think that goes into you know guarding yeah. your energy and you know um and not wanting to, to seem weak or vulnerable or, you know, um, whatever the case may be. Right. And, and, you know, I think, I think that varies from person to person. Like I'm a hugger, bro. Like, you know, I don't care. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't, 
I don't really like have a stigma in my head about it. Now, if I don't like you and you're obnoxious douchebag and you try and hug me, I'll probably, you probably get an elbow in your side. You know, you're like, I got man. I'm good. But, I'm good. Dog. <laughs> good <bro. laughs> but, you know, if it's, if it, you know, if it's just a normal situation, but yeah, I know what you're saying, but like, yeah, yeah, man, it's, um, it's more, I, I kind of alluded to a minute ago, you know, having to confront some of these things in my actual relationship has made me realize, yeah. uh, you know, it doesn't stop there. Right. It kind of extends into every facet yeah. of my life, like yeah. how I create connections with people. I right. talked about this with a business associate of mine because he is a connector, bro. Like TJ Ware, man, like he, he connects people. Right. And he yeah. loves it. It, it, yeah. it. it brings him joy. Right. Yeah. Me, I'm like, I shy away from, from making those connections or putting myself out there for all kinds of reasons. And those are internal, right. And I need to yeah. I need to recognize those right. and confront those just like you would any other like hard thing in your life. And you yeah. fear, and you, you know, shortcoming and you, you know, whatever it is, yeah. you got to confront it. Right. And to confront it, you have to be intentional about it. You have to be like right. aware of it when it happens. So like, you know, I've had, I've had guys that, you know, were friends of, either my wife's friend or husbands of my wife's friends or whatever the case, you know, mm. reach out and be like, Hey, we need to go grab a beer sometime. We need to go play golf or whatever. It's like, yeah, 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 we do. Yeah. But the phone call never gets made. Right. And like, yeah. they, they put it out there to extend the invite. Yeah. I didn't return it with a follow-up. Right. Why yeah. didn't I return it? Right. Did I so not we, we talked about this with Vanda. Right. And, and, um, so it, it, she talked about it, but I, I have some experience and, um, you know, um, I don't know, personality tests. Um, so I've been doing this Navy thing long enough that, uh, as I, as I moved into leadership positions, I, I've done multiple like personality tests, right? Yeah. Uh, there's the Meyer Briggs, uh, test and there's like a more advanced one that I did, and, um, and without fail, I'm an introvert, right? Without fail. Right. And, um, I tell people that and, and they're, they're like, what? You're not a fucking introvert. I'm like, uh, trust me. I am. Um, yeah. and, 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 and just real quick before getting to kind of the main point of this is I think a lot of people, uh, misinterpret what an introvert is, Right when people hear introvert, they think it's, it's, you know, it's this person like sits around and plays like, you know, video games and doesn't mess with people. Right. right? And that's not what an introvert is. An introvert is a person that gets their energy, right. They recharge by being alone. Right. I can do, I can do all the things I can be around people. Actually, I enjoy it. I enjoy being around people and like kind of being that like life of the party kind of person. Right. But when I'm done with it, yeah, I'm exhausted. I am exhausted. I just want to go home, watch some Netflix and be by myself, read a book, like collect my thoughts. And that's how I, I re-energize. Right. And so right. when we talk about an introvert, like that, that's what it means. That's, that's where you get your energy, right? Like I get my energy from being alone. Right. And I think that, you know, um, like if you are an introvert, then um, making, making new valuable friends is super hard, man. Yeah. I can be around all these people and I actually, I enjoy being around these people, but sure. if I want to bring them into my, like, like my, like circle, mm, then that's, that's like, that's a hard step kind of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Like, yeah. I mean, and, I, and I'm an introvert, right? Like, yeah. Like I said, I was raised an only child. I spent my childhood alone, right? Not, not alone, right? I had friends and I had, you know. You poor bastard. Around, right? but, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, like when you think of like your time at home, right? Like your time in your zone, right? Yeah. In your, your yeah. bubble, right? That you right. spend with your family, your mom, yeah. your dad, your sisters, your brothers. Yeah. If you don't have siblings, if it's just like, it was just me and my mom, right? Mm. And so a lot of time, thinking by myself in my room, playing video games, looking at my baseball cards, whatever I was doing, I was doing it by myself. I didn't have a yeah. brother or a sister coming in and bugging me and fucking up my harmony and, you know, like <laughs> doing all this stuff. So like, 
those connections and those like deal with this situation in this way because like someone just busted up in my room right like yeah. i gotta play with them or whatever the case may be like those are those are environmental things that happen to you as a child right and so amanda touched on this like how are you brought up right and so yeah. um yeah so you know being going outside of your comfort zone if you're an introvert and and you know, I don't mind being around people. Like, I don't mind, like, I mean, I go to networking events, strike up conversations with people, but um, it's, it is definitely not like my comfort zone, right? Some people that's where they live in their comfort yeah. zone is like yeah. being around people and being part of the chain of energy, right? Yeah. My comfort zone, our comfort zone is yeah. sitting in the recliner, relaxing, watching your favorite show, or just like turning your mind off for a second. Right. Yeah. That's like, that's, so yeah. yeah, so so doing these types of things has to be. That's why I keep saying like you have to kind of be intentional about yeah what it is what it is you're seeking out right and like yeah if, if something's not happening between me and another person, it's probably because I'm not letting it happen right. Like if they invited me for a beer and they or they invited me to go play golf right and it's been two years and we haven't played golf but we still talk every now and then, that's kind of on me. Right. And yeah. so like, I got to look and yeah. see like, why am I shutting down? Like, is it something about this person or is it just like, I don't really want to like put the energy into it or am I scared of something or if, am I, am I scared? I'm going to put energy into it. And it's just going to like, kind of like not be anything anyway. So why waste right. the time? Right. You know, it's those types of thoughts that like, you know, you got to get out of your head and it's not just about relationships. That's anything in life. Right. Like if you want to do something, do it. If you don't, it's your fault. Right. So, yeah, 100%, uh, man. Like, I think that, um, so I have recently, I'm going to say recently, probably in the last six months or so. Um, yeah. And, and, and way before that, but like really putting it into practice, right? Like, um, uh, you know, it get kind of touchy feely, right? Like, we talk about this idea of negative self talk, right? Hey, that's a, that's a thing, right? Like, um, and, and it's really simple things, right? Like, um, like tonight, for example, um, you know, I had, uh, an event that I had to go to none of my, you know, people that I work with were necessarily involved in it, you know, but because of my, my role here, um, like I, I'm expected to go, right. And I had to put on like a formal uniform, uh, the whole thing. And it, it was kind of a pain in the ass, honestly. Right. And like real talk, do I want to do it? Hell no, man. I want to sit down and watch, uh, Picard, which is, uh, on episode three, cause I'm a Trekkie. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> episode three. <laughs> now, right. Like, that's what I wanted to do. Right. But I, I, I knew that it's going to sound like, Oh my God, like you're so tortured that you had to do. That's not what I'm saying. Right. Like I knew that it was my responsibility. And, um, and there, there's things like that, you know, kind of throughout and, um, and, and, and the negative self-talk that I'm talking about is like, that tells you like, Oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, this is going to suck. Oh, this is going to be terrible. Right. And, and you, you like, you tell the, yourself those things and maybe it's like, Oh man, you know, th th like this dude's pretty cool, man. We had a good conversation. He wants to go play golf. That, and you get this, like, even if it's like, you know, if anxiety is a hundred, maybe you get like 3% anxiety, right? Like, oh man, like he's new and I got to have this like conversation with him. 18 holes. That's like five hours. I got to hang around this dude. Right. And so you get this like anxiety about like being around somebody especially another another man right like that, yeah. that like that's i don't know this motherfucker right and right. uh and you get this anxiety this anxiety and you gotta find this place where you just like stop like it's you gotta recognize like yeah what are you doing dude like stop what you're doing let's go like, play golf <laughs> Brett, go play golf man go play yeah. golf go play yeah. golf go to the event go have some beers with this dude what is the worst that can happen? Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and you just go do it. Right. And you just go do it. And, and who knows, man, maybe you make a connection with somebody that 
you're like, oh shit, man. Like I can't, I kind of like this fucking dude. You know what I mean? Um, and it's, it's not in a, uh, in a weird way or whatever. Right. It's like, Hey man, like maybe, maybe, maybe me and this dude can be like homies. Like I, I can hit him up when I need something or we can talk about like life. Um, because the way that, the way that you talk about life with one of your man friends, right. Is just different than the way you talk about it with your wife or um, anybody else. Right. And um, I think that the more like, you know, um, friends that are men that you're, that are your cheerleaders, they're like, you can do this. Right. I think the more, the better, man. Right. Yeah. And, and, and we don't do it enough for each other. We don't cheer each other on, man. Not the right. way we should, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. Um, you know, and it, and it goes back to what I said earlier. You know, if you don't have someone actively involved helping you achieve whatever goal it is or whatever priority you have in your life, if you made it known to them, right? Like, I'm not right. supposed to read your mind, right? But, like... Like that's, that's the level of effort that like a friend puts forward, right? Like you, you yeah. want to, you want to help someone, right? I'm not saying you have to be like all up in their business or, you know, like yeah anything crazy, but like, it's just about showing that, you know, you're invested in their well being, right? right? Yeah. And it's just a mutual thing that happens when you make a connection with someone like, you know, being vulnerable, we keep saying being vulnerable, right? Like mm -hmm. gross, that whatever. Like, yeah, I don't want to be vulnerable. What does that even mean? But seriously, like, if you open up to someone, a lot of times they'll follow your lead, right? And I know this, right? But a lot of times they're just as apprehensive about opening up Pandora's box with you as you are with them, right? Like, it's it's yeah, it's that sizing up. Like, we're both doing the same thing, right? So, like, right. you know. And I think that's the fear in, in, in men's head is that if I, you know, open up this topic of conversation or I, you know, just show my card to show my hand or show how I'm really feeling or be vulnerable or open up to this person that they're not going to reciprocate. Right. And if right. they don't reciprocate, that probably means they're thinking I'm a freaking weirdo and like, mm. eh, right. Yeah. That's, it, it's almost like a fear of rejection without being rejected, but like, it's, right that's the apprehension, right? Like that's yeah. the little micro fear that's inside every yeah. blossoming friendship. Right. Yeah. And so that's what, like, that's what I've, you know, deduced from all this, you know, introspection that we've, we've had over the last week is like, you know, I just need to like return the phone call, yeah. you know, put myself out there, yeah. start talking about some real shit, see where it yeah. goes. Right. Yeah. And if it doesn't go anywhere, like who cares, whatever, yeah. Like yeah. Go back home, hang out with my wife and kids. You know, like one hundred percent, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, I think that uh, you know, I, I, I am going to talk about you know the military and the navy just real quick, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm lucky and I'm blessed, right? Because, um, you know, I'm a navy chief, right? And in the navy, when you make E seven, you go through this initiation process. And, you know, if, 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 if you're in a fraternity or something, you, you hear initiation, you think, oh, I know what that is, but it's kind of this different thing, right? Like, um, where, uh, we go through like a six week, like, um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like this get to know you kind of period. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and when you come out of that, you have an automatic group of, people that you trust implicitly right right and 20 percent of them are shit bags right because 20 percent of any group are shit bags right oh. uh, that's, that's that's kind of the rule of life right <laughs> but that means 80 percent that you have you know you have an automatic connection just based on the fact that you've been through that um right. that life event together right and um but what I'll say is that, like, if you're not in the chief's mess in the Navy, right, then I have a real hard time trusting you. Sure. Right. Yeah. Because you haven't been through that. that You've been conditioned. Right. Right. Because like, someone in the Navy 
figured out a long time ago that if we can put these group of dudes through this experience together and there's a common bond between them all, there will be a common bond that lasts forever, right? Like yes. Between a good majority of them, right? Maybe not all yeah. of them, right? You're not going to yeah. be the best friends with all of them. But like, yeah. that's how the Navy has been intentional about fostering healthy, meaningful relationships between their leadership. Yeah. Right? And yeah. that's why when it's left up to our own devices and you're an introvert, right? you're a busy dude, yeah. it doesn't happen because you're not forced into those situations because you weren't intentional. And, and there it is, dude. We, we, we took a long time to get to that. Right. So <laughs> that's it, right. I feel, do you remember? Look, okay. Here it goes. This is what I do, right? I'm going on a fucking tangent. Oh, by the way, I may have had a little bit to drink tonight. Okay, anyway, so <laughs> that was a 20-second clip of the whole thing. Uh, they'll probably pull it out and be like, oh, Dean was drunk. But anyway, so do you remember? No, the part before that is where you take it out and you make your intro from that. <laughs> <laughs> right before that. The light bulb. Where we cracked the nut, where we, where we had the breakthrough. <laughs> yeah, we cracked the nut. Cut it off before Dean said, I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I remember being a kid. Um, and um, I remember being a kid. I go to fucking, you know, my grandma's house. And she had a bowl of, like, pecans or walnuts. And it was, like, the metal, like, cracker thing. You know what I'm talking about? You put the, yeah. It was, like, you, you put it in there and you crack yeah. it and, you, you know. You eat the nut, right? And um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, bro? Where are you going? We got nutcrackers, we got pecans, we got walnuts. <laughs> I feel like that's what we just did, right? Like, oh, we yeah. just, we we're just like, oh shit, there it is, right? Like, um, uh, society does not have a way to. Um, allow for men to uh, have some common uh, commonality in their way of thinking. Right. And um, that's probably not the answer because how do you do that? Right. Um, well, I think, you know, I think, uh, you know, there are some outlets for that, right? Like there's uh, like, so in the roofing industry, right. There's uh there's a group of guys that they run uh, a conference and a couple other, you know, things, but they do men's retreats, right. Mm. It's not a couple's retreat. It's yeah. Not, it's not an excuse to go party. Right. Like right. they usually like they rent a, a badass, like, you know, badass cabin on the Ozarks or, or wherever, right. Like yeah. a good, nice environment for, these men to go and talk about real shit, right? Like yeah. not about how to be better marketers or be better salesmen or be better production. It's mm -hmm. how to be a better leader, how to be a better husband, yeah. like write your obituary and read it out loud. Right. Yeah. And what would you change about, what you, yeah. you know, so there's also men's retreats like through churches and yeah. there's, um, but you have to be, you have to seek those things out. Right. Like, and right. if you're not already part of those, kind of circles right right it's it's not it's not a thing that's like we're not conditioned to do that right like it's um, not a normal part of society yeah. to be like let's put 50 men in a group and like uh see what yeah. happens right you know like, i wonder though and i, I don't I, I haven't done any research on this um but uh it occurs to me just as we're talking like i wonder i wonder what the native americans did like did mm -hmm. did they have this ability to you know, bring men together um, or, you know, what, what did other indigenous like, you know, peoples do, you know? Um, I mean, what did our ancestors do uh, whether it was here or in, you know, England or wherever we're from Germany, Ireland, Wales, right. It, it kind of feels like over time men have become more separated from each other. And I mean, even if you look like, um, like how did, how did the American revolution happen? Because dudes were hanging out, man. Right. They were hanging out, like, like hanging out, like, yeah. Okay. Were they drinking beer? Yeah. They were drinking beer. Um, but like they had like clubs and like, they, they, like men were, 
um, okay with being aligned and close to each other, right? And it feels like over time, like men, specifically men, have just become like further and further apart from each other. Like we're we're each on our own island trying to compete with each other instead of like, you know, maybe it was the Kiwanis Club or I'm not a Mason, but the Masons, right? And, and like there's all these things that used to unite men that were very accessible and popular. And right. we, 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 I don't know, we, it feels like that's not the case anymore. Like, like right. men are just kind of like on, on an right. Island by themselves these days. Look at what happened with boy Scouts, right? Yeah. Like, dude. So like, I wasn't even a boy scout for that long. Right? I was just like a couple, couple seasons. Right. <laughs> but like, yeah. Um, you were, you were heavily involved in, I'm an Eagle scout. Yeah. I'm an Eagle Eagle scout. Scout. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it's tragic, like what happened with the whole organization as a whole, but I feel like things like that were good entry points for boys to learn how to become men. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they did foster that sense of community. Right. Right. And, um, yeah, I just think as a society, we've lost that a lot, you know, yeah. lost a lot of that. And, you know, mm. everybody's on their phones, everybody's in their, their, their little bubble and they're just go, go, go. So like, yeah, it all comes down to conditioning, right? Like we're not conditioned to value those things anymore yeah. as much as we were. And yeah. I feel like the world is just becoming more and more polarized and more and more divisive, right? Like it's just, yeah. everybody's got an opinion where, you know, I mean, politics and religion have always been the center of, you know, division, but uh, it yeah. just feels feels uh, inflamed right now, right, over the past couple of cycles. But yeah. Not to, not to get into all that. Just no, like no, no. I'm, I'm fine with talking about it, right? Um, yeah. You know, uh, uh, do you know who uh, Sean Whalen is or have, have you – right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so guys like him, and Andrew Frisella, um, you know, and there, there's a few of them out there, right? Like, um, I, I, I kind of feel like they're trailblazers, right? Like right. it's okay for us to cheer each other on, man. Right. Yeah, you know, and I think that, um, you know, in, in our own little way, right? Like, Hey dude, like, and I've been cheering you on for 20 years, man. Like, like I want to see Matt fucking do his thing. Right. And I know, I know you, you, you reciprocate. So it's not a new thing to us, but it's kind of like, you know, if somebody's watching this right now and who knows who's watching it, but if you're watching it, right. Like, um, Hey man, like, I, you know, <laughs> I want to, if you're a man out there and you're watching this, I want to see you do your fucking thing, man. I want to see you like go hard in the paint. I want to see you do like reach the, the, the max potential that you have. Um, even, even if it's, it's in, you know, competition with me. Right. Um, a, as an example, and I'm sorry, Matt, I'm going on a rant right now. So just bear with me. Right. I've got yeah, multiple, yeah. Pe- multiple people that are doing podcasts right now. Right. Uh, you know, and, um, I want to see them be more successful than me, right? Like I want to see them like blow the fuck up, right? Like that's yeah. what I want to see, you know? And, and, yeah. Hey, and if I get there, I get there, right? But like I want somebody that I am, or that I have some ability to influence, right? I want to see them like skyrocket, right? Yeah. Um you know, and, and I think we need we need more of that, right? Like we gotta Absolutely. cheer each other wrong, man. You know, like let's go, let's fucking I've go. Seen it on a, I've seen it happen on a macro level within our industry, within the roofing industry, right? Like there's there's a guy that started throwing conferences and came out with a training platform and um kind of like initiated a renaissance in this like really like not well thought of industry of roofers, right? Like when you think of a roofer, you don't think of a family man, right? You think of a meth head with a shirt off, (laughs) smoking a cigarette on the roof, right? Like that's what you think of, right? And 
he did a lot. Uh, his name's Anthony Del Medico. He did a lot to kind of like elevate the industry and like bring it together as a sense of community. Because roofers used to fight out in the streets over jobs, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, storm hits, you're on my property. I've already inspected it. I already signed. You don't see my sign on the yard. Like, let's go, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. that's how it used to be. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, I never experienced that. Like when I when I got in the industry, it kind of passed us by a little bit. But, yeah. um, but now I see it in the industry where like. The whole industry is a bit of a community now, right? And we yeah. all want to see each other win, right? Because a rising tide raises all ships, right? That's if you it. do well, that's better for me. If you're yeah. doing well and you're making a good name for yourself out in the community, that's good for my business because hopefully people will now change their stigma of how they're thinking about roofing companies or, or whatever the case may be. Right. And it's to the point where like when someone, you know, we have our industry Facebook groups and, and that we're all part of. And when someone like starts getting overly negative and starts like kind of like either bashing or saying just some ignorant shit, yeah, the community doesn't tolerate it, right? Like they'll they 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 will come to the defense, and it's like tens of thousands of people in this industry that are part of these groups, right? And right. so you start to see that network effect and that community effect taking shape. So like anyway, all that to say, there's like a macro level of that happening, but there's also it needs to be on a micro level within our own communities, and we need yeah. to cheer each other on and be beacons of, of positivity and light and right. just bastions of like what it means to be yeah. a man and not yeah, apologizing dude. for anything. Exactly. Right? So <laughs> I, I was talking to a group of uh, E6s today, right? Um, uh, we, we did this week long kind of like um, uh, joint leadership, uh, class anyways. Um, and, and the thing that I left them with, um, you know, it's very applicable to the military, but I think that it's, it's ap applicable to men. Right. And what I told them was that, um, you know, you guys, and, and I wasn't trying to be an asshole. I just tell them, right. Like you guys are in this place where, you know, um, from from you know a, a, a leadership philosophy right like you guys have blinders on just just imagine like go with me on this on this trip right like you have blinders on right and those blinders only allow you to look up right and um and when you know and so all you see is the next thing that you want to get to right you don't see anything to your left and right or or, or down right and and what I told him was, I said, hey, man, so here, here's what I need you to do, right? Like, take the blinders off, first of all. Like, take them off, okay? And then realize, look to your left and look to your right, and those are your peers, right? Those are all the people that are in a similar situation as you. In the military, it's the same pay grade kind of thing, right? But, you know, it applies. And so these are all your peers, right? And then um, I don't need you just to look left and right. I want you to look up and say, hey, man, that's where I want to go, right? But I also want you to look down and say, hey, these are the people that are not as successful as me, right? These are the E5s, E4s, E3s. Um, and and, 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 and I, what I told them is, here's where you need to be, right? You need to be looking left and right. And for those people, you're going to identify people like, hey, that's a bad motherfucker, right? Like that dude's ready. And that guy, you need to like start pushing him up. Like, hey man, come here. Push him on his butt, right? Like, hey, grab on the ledge. I got you, right? And then you look down like, hey man, like you're doing a good job. I'm proud of you. Like you need to be up here with me, right? Like and pull him up, right? And so like, we all need to be doing this thing, right? Like pushing up and pulling up, pull, pushing up and pulling up all the time. And guess what? If we're all doing that, then um, that person you pushed up, when they get there, right, they're going to look left and right and be like, oh, they're going to be doing the same thing. And we look down, hey, hey, Dean, you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah motherfucker, I'm ready. And they're yeah. going to pull you, right? They're going to pull you up. And then when you get there, it's just, it's like this, this cycle, right? And it, it makes perfect sense in the military, right? But I think that it makes sense you know, for men in society, like, Hey man, 
come on, dude. Like, let's, let's, let's don't be in competition. Let's, let's like help each other. Let's, let's all yeah. elevate each other kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, that's, that's, I think it's kind of probably a good thing to close on because that's, um, that's where I'm trying to get to in life, right? Like my goals and aspirations, of course, I want my family to be taken care of. I want to be financially secure. I don't want to have to worry about things. And, you know, if we were filthy rich, that'd be awesome. Right. Yeah. But it's more about just getting to a, a place where we're good. Right. And right. then what I want to do is turn my resources and turn my focus away from my personal, you know, um, steps forward and help other people, you know, with whatever they need, right. Whether it's connections or my experience or whatever. And I think a lot of times we can lose, or I know I can lose sight that like the two aren't necessarily mutually exclusive, right? Like I don't have to do one before I can do the other. Right. And, um, so yeah, it, it just, uh, it just kind of reframes things in my head. It's, it's weird having that one conversation with Desiree just kind of changed yeah. how I'm currently viewing, uh, you know, how I'm moving through the world. Right. And, yeah. and, and the, the effect I'm having on people and the effect I'm letting people have on me. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's good, man. It's, 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 it's reframing. And I hope that this conversation helps other, uh, men out there just kind of maybe recognize some things about themselves that they're having, you know, the same or similar issues or whatever. Like, I think it's, uh, it's an important thing to, um, recognize and address and, you know, embrace because it segues into what we're going to be talking about next time, which is personal time, me time. What does it mean to actually like have some, some some valuable me time i'm not talking right. about working on the yard or right. you know being locked in your office like what does it mean to actually like fulfill yourself right right or yeah pour yeah. back into yourself so yeah it's been a really good conversation man i, I really enjoyed for it. sure man uh you know we talk about um you know uh you know the next episode um actually uh amanda who is gonna be on um that episode with us uh yeah licensed clinical social worker uh you know registered uh therapist her husband um uh is a good friend of mine uh aaron paul and uh i'm sure he got this from her right but what he used to tell me um when we worked together he said self-care is not selfish right and that's a hard thing to hear for, for a man, right? Like sure, it sure does feel selfish sometimes, you know, yeah, when, when it's you're like, to provide and you're conditioned to be that's the, it. the, the yeah. lighthouse, right? It, right. It gets a little, it's conflicting to, to, you know, dive yeah. into those. Things. You always yeah, feel I'm, like you're you be doing something productive. Right. 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 But sometimes the most productive thing is, um, doing something that, um, it has nothing to do with um, some tangible result, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, anyways, all right, dude. Um, speaking of meaningful relationships, I love you. I love you, dude. You know. Yeah. Um, and I'm proud of you. And uh, uh, thank God that you, you have a wife, um, you know, um, like I do that will call you on your bullshit. <laughs> yeah. All day. <laughs> Everyone All should hope are. so much right in life. Man. I couldn't be, I couldn't be with a pacifist. I, couldn't. <laughs> yeah. I need someone to be like, what are you talking about, man? Hey, dude, Being an like, idiot. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. she straight up told me like that, that that'll be that'll be the next conversation like, you don't care about yourself you care about yourself you'd have friends and you'd go to the gym like, so two episodes from now we're going to talk about going to the gym okay yeah, yeah. all right so uh, next next topic is self-care which might get a little bit in the gym and then then we're going to talk about um look, 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 you know let's go get fucking buff well, I, can, yeah. I can talk about I can talk about that a little bit. All right. Yeah. All right, dude. All right, homeboy. I love you, man.